Hi, this is Lesson 6.6 .6 in Taylor Shaw. We're doing extended calculus, L'Hopital's rule. Now, some limits can't be found by algebraic methods. So what we use is something that was found out by L'Hopital's. If it's in the indeterminate form, 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. And that is called L'Hopital's rule. And it may help you find the limit. So if I do have a limit as we go to something, 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, that resultant rational expression limit will be exactly the same as if I take the derivative of the numerator and the derivative of the denominator, put them in their respective places, and use them. Now, I'm not going to probably be using the quotient rule here. This is just do the top, do the bottom, and keep them separate. So let's try this and see what we end up with for number one. First of all, you have to see if you have an indeterminate form. Sure enough, I have infinity over infinity if I plug in infinity. So I can go ahead and go x goes to infinity. Well, what's the derivative of the numerator? Well, that's going to be a 1. What's the derivative of the denominator? Well, that's going to be e to the x. And so when I evaluate this, this is just going to be 1 over a really big number, so I'm going to go to 0. So that's where L'Hopital's did help me. Now, number two is very similar. I have infinity over infinity. And so I can do this limit as x approaches infinity. And then this would be e to the x all over 1. So this is going to go off to infinity. It does not exist. It might be another one. This one is 0 over, oh, what's this denominator? Oh, it's 0 over 1. That's just going to be 0. I don't have to use L'Hopital's rule because direct substitution yields a zero. So that's what we're going to end up with. Uh, how about number four? The limit as x approaches zero from the left, e to the x and x. Well, this one is going to be similar to this one here, or maybe not, because I do get one over zero from the left. So this means that I get 1 over a very, very small number, which means a very big number. But since it's from the left, it's going to be a very big negative number. So no, it's not like number 2. It's very different. Okay, then number 5, the limit as x goes to 0 of this function right here. If I plug in 0, I'm going to get 3 minus 3 on top, and I'm going to get 0 on the bottom. So this is a candidate that we can go ahead and use, uh, L'Hopital's. So let's take the derivative of the top. The derivative of the top is going to be, well, I need the limit. Keep that going. Don't just write non-existent limit things there. So if I take this derivative, I'm going to get negative 9 e to the 3x because I multiplied by the chain of 3, and then I end up taking the derivative of the bottom, and I'm going to go to 1. So as x goes to 0, I should be able to evaluate this. Sure, the numerator goes to negative 9 over 1, so this would be negative 9. So we do get a value there. Nice. Thank you, Mr. L'Hopital. Now, number six, this is going to be infinity times, oh, that looks like zero. This isn't the form that we want. However, what if I rewrite this, and I'm not taking the derivative yet, what if I rewrite this as x goes to negative infinity, all of x squared, all over e to the negative x? Now I'm going to plug in the negative infinity, this is going to go to infinity, and what does this go to when I plug in negative infinity? Oh, that goes to infinity as well. So now I can use L'Hopital's rule just because I rewrote it a little bit. So if I take the derivative of the top and the bottom, now I'm going to get negative infinity over negative infinity, so I need to do this one more time. So I'm going to take the derivative of the top, and the derivative of the bottom, that brings me back to e to the negative x. And if I plug in negative infinity, it's going to be 2 over infinity, which gives me a 0. So I can evaluate it now. Nice. This works out quite good. Let's look at number 7 now. 7 is a little bit different. This is going to be infinity minus infinity. This goes, the ln x goes to 0, so it's 1 over 0. This is 1 over 0 for this one as well, so it's going to be infinity minus infinity. What I might want to do is get a common denominator. So let's see if I can rewrite this first. So I'm not using L'Hopital's rule, because I can't. But let's see if we can do this with a common denominator. So I did that here. I get the x minus 1, x minus 1 I need there, and the ln x and the ln x there. So this is what I end up with. 
And so if I move on with this, now I can possibly try L'Hopital's. Let's see. So now I get 0 over 0 minus 0 times 0. So yes, now I can use L'Hopital's rule. So let's try this. x approaches 1. Take the derivative of the numerator. I'm going to get 1 minus 1 over x all over the derivative of the denominator. It's going to be a little bit of a product rule. So it's going to be ln x. First times the derivative of the second, which is times 1, plus the second, x minus 1 times 1 over x. So that's going to be 1 minus 1 over x. I get that because the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. 1 over x times x is 1. 1 over x times that is also 1 over x. So let's clear the fractions here. I got an x and an x. So I got the limit as x approaches 1 of x minus 1 all over x, ln x minus x minus 1. Anything yet? Let's do a direct substitution. Wow, well, we get 0 over 0 again. So this is still 0 over 0, so let's try this one more time. The limit as x approaches 1, take the derivative. I'm going to get a 1 in the numerator. That's always a good thing. And then I'm going to get a little bit of a product rule down below. First times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first, and then minus 1. So now I can do a, uh, well, let's see this. This is a 1 right here. 1 minus 1, that goes away. So this is the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over ln x, which would be 1 over 0, which is a very small number, which means I'm going to get a very... I don't know where I got this minus from. This is a plus. And so that makes this a plus. So then I have ln x plus 2. So when I plug in this, now I get 1 half. That looks better. So my limit is 1 half. You can graph these things too and check them, but a lot of times you want to do it analytically with L'Hopital's rule. So number 8, this says do it without L'Hopital's rule. Well, this is what we did before. x approaches negative 1. If you plug in negative 1, you're going to get 0 over 0. So we factored, and we canceled. So x plus 1s cancel. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1 to x minus 1, which would give me negative 4. I just do a direct substitution now once I factored and canceled. So let's try it now with L'Hopital's rule. That's what number 9 says. So we go ahead and say, okay, it is 0 over 0. So the limit as x approaches negative 1 of 4x all over 1. Well, now I can do a direct substitution. This is going to give me negative 4 as well. Ooh, either 1. This one seems a little bit easier. Maybe I'll be using it more often. So let's look at these now. They, they are not 0 over 0 and uh, infinity over infinity. And let's see which ones are indeterminate. So with this one, I get this one here, I get 1 to infinity. This is indeterminate as we know it. Okay, It does look like the x, but we'd have to check on that. This one here would be 0 to the 0. That would be indeterminate. And then we have this one here, which is infinity, which is my base, to the 0. That would be indeterminate as well. This one here, we get 0 to infinity. Because 1 over x, when we go to 0, that thing goes to infinity. This is determinant. And because it's 0 to a power, it's going to be 0. So this one does have an answer. Okay, then down here, find the following limits. Okay, so this one, this is that indeterminate form that we just looked up above. This is how you, you show it. Let y equal the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x to the x. And why we like setting equal to y and dealing with y is because we'll take the natural log of both sides 
And when we do that, we can bring this x to Regulersville. So that's what we want to do. So ln y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of x ln 1 plus 1 over x. So I want to try to write this as a fraction. So this is the limit as x approaches infinity. And I'm going to leave this ln of 1 plus 1 over x because that will go to 0. And then this would be x to the negative 1. So now I have as x goes to infinity of 0 over 0. So now I can use L'Hopital's rule. So when I do this, this is going to be equal to limit as x approaches infinity of. So I take my derivative of the numerator and I get 1 over the object of the logarithm and then I'm going to multiply by the chain. So the derivative of 1 over x is negative x to the negative 2. Then I'm going to take the derivative of the denominator and get negative x, negative 2. Oh, nice. And so when I simplify this, I'm going to get the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. And if you notice, that is going to be 1. Now notice we had this as ln y, so this tells me that ln y is equal to 1. Well, what does y equal then? y then would be equal to e. So this limit is e. Number 15, uh, ask me about it in class, and maybe we'll go through it, maybe we won't, but uh, I might skip it over right now. So the big thing, I think, though, is this bottom, is comparing different functions. And so if I have these different functions right here, let's put them in rank order of rate of growth for big X. And so when I do this, y equals 1 is going to be my most mellow growth function. It's not growing at all. Then y equal to, oh, what compare? What grows faster? y equal to x or y equal to ln x? Well, I think that ln x is slower. So then I'm going to have y equal to x, y equal to x squared, and then y equal to x to the 10th. Why is x to the 10th not as big as e to the x? Well, we know that exponentials grow faster eventually over this polynomial. So what does that mean for us? That means if I do a comparison as x goes to infinity of e to the x and x to the 10th. Well, I could take this derivative many times and the numerator and denominator because it is infinity over infinity. And then eventually, though, I'm just going to be left with e to the x again. And so it's going to go off to infinity. So this evaluation is that the numerator grows faster than the denominator. So I'm going to go off to infinity. So let's see what happens here. Number 17, what grows faster? ln x grows the slowest of all these three functions, and I'm adding 2 in the denominator, so this is going to go to 0 as x goes to infinity. Now this one says as x goes to 0. That one's kind of in reverse from what we're dealing with because we're not talking about going to infinity, so relative comparison for growth doesn't work. doesn't work for us. So it's only as x goes to infinity like I had over in this example here. So you can compare things as x goes to infinity and figure out if you're going to go to 0 or if you're going to go to infinity. Small over big, you're going to go to 0. Big over small, you're going to go to infinity. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks a lot for listening, and we'll see you later.